Hello everyone, welcome to our Tuesday Sew Along. Today we're going to be doing another V-block uh, pattern and it is block number 10 of the Blockbuster series. So I want to share a couple of things with you. First of all, the Blockbuster pattern. Okay, now a few minutes ago everything was working, so we're going to hope it's still working. So the pattern for today looks like this, and I wanted to show you a couple of things uh, that you can be looking for. This is what you download from the Studio 180 Design website. What you download from me from our uh, Google file is the cutting instructions so that you know what size squares or strips to cut to start with. Because there are uh, three different size options on this sheet, we're doing 12 inch blocks of everything, but you could always do a 9 inch or a 6 inch or whatever sizes are listed on your patterns. Also, it gives a level of difficulty indicator up here in the corner. Don't let that scare you because if you break this down into bite sized pieces, it's very doable. Um, at the bottom of the page here, it's going to give you a unit summary. And notice that um, the this is using a high-low and a sidekick unit, as well as a four-patch for the center. And we'll talk about the four-patch in a minute. But notice on this sidekick and high-low, they are different in that the sidekick has a, a long skinny triangle leaning up to the top left corner, where the, the I think I said that wrong, this is the high-low because it has a high point and a low point. The sidekick only has the one skinny triangle pointing up to the top right. So that's going to be uh, important to notice when you start cutting the pieces that you're going to use to make your sidekick unit and your high-low unit. So the sidekick and high-low is a um, technique that uh, Deb has designed that uses the V-block tool and the technique sheets for the high-low, it's going to have a level of difficulty indicator as well. Plus, all of the technique sheets have a um, little icon that shows you which tool that technique goes with. Most of the tools have at least one technique sheet. Some of them have several more than that. It'll give you uh, information about the process, plus there's often sizing, a sizing chart, and every technique has its own YouTube video. So you can sit down with the technique sheet, which we sell here at the shop, and watch the YouTube video of Deb explaining the process. Now I'm going to walk you through the process today for the size needed for a 12 inch block. So I'm just going to stick this out of my way because I won't need it for what I'm going to show you. But let's look at today's block. So it is called Twisted Pinwheel and I've got the segments made. Now each segment has to finish four inches. So I've got um, a four patch that I'll show you in just a minute. I've got some high-low units which have a high point and a low point and then I've got some um, sidekick units. I'm going to take these off of here because I want you to notice they are leaning a different direction. We'll do that in just a minute, but I want to just real quickly talk about the four patch. Um, you could, of course, do a um, strip piecing and have a strip that is um, the size you need. And in, in your instructions, it tells you to cut um, a two and a half inch by six inch strip of blue and a six inch, two and a half by six inch strip of red. So I can either do that with squares like this. And of course, they would need to be two and a half inch squares. Or I can take um, the strips and do a little strip piecing. So let me move this out of the way because we're actually going to use that for something else. And I'll show you that in just a minute. And I'm going to show you how I approached the four patch. Now, many of you, if you've been using uh, Deb's tools for a long time, you may know that there is a tool called the four patch square up. I don't use it real often, but it's kind of handy um, because you would cut the strips, instead of cutting them two and a half, you would cut them two and three fourths. You would do this process, make your four patch and trim the whole thing down so that you get the precision that you're used to with all of her tools. 
Um, I don't use it a lot. I am. I do have a block later in this series that I will use that to show you um, a project or one of the blocks that we're going to be doing. So if you're doing strip piecing, you would just stitch your one or two and a half inch strips together. And then whatever way you want to press it, it doesn't really matter. You're just going to press one way or the other. Now, some people like to press open. I typically don't press open, but you could if you felt the need to. And then I would take this to the ironing surface. And I had the iron on a while ago. Let's see if it's heated up enough to use it. So then I'm going to press with my iron just set the iron on it and then if you're going to use the acorn pressing pin now would be the time to just give it a quick swipe set your iron back on it and that gives it just a little bit more of a crease then all i would need to do is find a tool that i can cut some two and a half inch segments so typically when i'm stitching i have a lot of tools close by i I'm going to show you several options. I can grab my 12 by 6 ruler, which I almost always have close by, and I would just put a horizontal line on the seam and measure over two and a half inches and make a cut. So that's one option. I could take my tucker trimmer, which is usually close by, and I could put the two and a half inch line on the edge. I would find a horizontal line to line up on my seam just to make sure I'm nice and straight. And then I would make my cut. Or, since this block is using the V-block tool, I could actually use my V-block tool. Now, when you're doing this, um, and I'll show you what the issue might be. I would find my two and a half inch line and a horizontal line to put on the seam here. Now notice when I have the two and a half inch line lined up here, there's um, about a quarter inch extra up here because that's in the seam here. Also, if I decide to use this, I have nothing here to make sure this is lined up straight on the part below this. But in a pinch, if I'm somewhere, if I happen to walk to a different cutting area and I don't have my six by 12 ruler, I could use um, my V-block tool because it does have a two and a half inch mark. This is my, um, my go-to tool, this one, or even if you have a four and a half inch square um, ruler, you could also use that. Because guess what? This whole section after you stitch it should be four and a half inches for this particular size. And so then I would just grab a cutting tool so this gives you several options for what you need to cut those apart. And there's my other two and a half inch segment. And I'm going to have about an inch left over. So then I would just flip this together and I would stitch that together. So I'm ready to stitch down the side of that. And I'll show you real quickly what that looks like. Hello girls. So. I am going to stitch right down the side and typically I don't pin but if you feel like you need to you could always pin right there I'm just going to stitch right along here and I want to make sure that the seams lock together and I pressed both or the whole strip toward the red so they nest together right there and I just hold my finger there till I get it to the needle so that it is contained and it'll go right under the needle and it'll make the seam exactly what I want. And then I can, uh, then I'm going to park my needle and I can twizzle that intersection so it lays down nice and flat. Now, to do that, I'm just going to split that seam. I can take out these two or three stitches on this side and these two or three stitches on this side up to that seam that crosses over. Then when I open it, that gives me the um, center that I want. Then when I press, I actually am going to make sure that this seam goes toward the blue. This seam goes toward the blue so that it goes around. I don't have it where you can see what I'm doing. So that my seams go around the center. And I do press from the front side 
because that way I can make sure that everything lays down nice and flat and my center lays down nice and flat. So I'll take this back to the overhead camera because I'm going to show you some things with the V-Block tool in just a minute anyway. So I'm ready to press that. I've got my seams going the way I want them to go. Set the iron on it and let the iron do the work and then put just a little acorn pressing solution on that cross seam so it'll lay down nice and flat and I have my center of my block um, that way. So you have several color options for the V-block uh, units that you're making, the sidekick and the high-low unit. Um, and I've got on my uh, particular one, I have some sidekicks that are red and some sidekicks that are blue. I've got them, I was pointing to the wrong one. My sidekick just has one side. My high-low has a pale blue side, that's my high part, and then I've got some blue and some red low parts, and I'll show you how I did that. So I'm going to start with just the sidekick, because it only requires one step. Um, I'm going to change my mind, and I'm going to actually start with this one, and you'll see why in just a minute. So I want you to notice that this one has that uh, seam leaning from the center of the bottom where the V would be up to the top left. Now I have put a note on my plate and I just wrote it on there as I was cutting and, and uh, preparing this ahead of time. I try to put notes that I think uh, you might need to help you as you're piecing yours together. So I actually typed this into the notes that you're going to download. And for the um, high-low unit, you're going to place your squares face up. And you're going to place the strip that you're going to cut those side triangles face up as well. So I'm going to just restack this. And I'm going to do four of them. So, and I'll tell you a little trick in a minute, but I want you to see why I do that. When you are cutting the pieces you need for the V-block unit, and you can easily see, if I lay my ruler here, you can see that angled side follows the pale blue triangle here. So I want to make sure that when I cut these squares, I'm going to have the correct angle. If I don't have all of my squares face up for these um, high-low units, I'm going to have a problem. And I'm going to go to the dashed line, it says it's the fold line for the center triangle, and I'm going to make my cut. Once you do that, now right now you're just ignoring this low uh, triangle and just looking at the high triangle, see that it's the same angle? That's very important because if you um, put that together and it's not the same angle, your V-block unit may be hard to do. So now this is my side triangle, my replacement triangle, and I'm going all the way to the bold solid line, and I'm going to make a cut. And notice it is face up. When I do that and lay that there, you can see that those are the same angle. So. Remember, when you're cutting side triangles, you just twist the ruler around until you find that long diagonal line that comes almost to the corner. And I'm going to line that up, and I'm going to make my next cut. And there's a, my second side triangle. I'm going to twist. I never turn my ruler upside down. I'm simply twisting. And there's my fourth one, or third one. I need four of these to match up with my four squares because I need four units. Two are going to be red low triangles and two are going to be blue. So I have four side triangles that are oriented the correct way. And then I have four base squares that I've cut off the edge. Now I'm just going to lay these on top of here and let's talk about the um, sidekick, notice the angle is opposite. So I cannot start with my squares face up and have the right angle. But if I stack all of them, 
make sure they're stacked nice and straight and I'm just making sure that I align the edges now you're going to trim these when you get them stitched so you do have a little bit of wiggle room so now that I've got them nice and stacked I'm going to flip the whole stack over so that they're all face down because look what happens if I turn this over now that angle matches the angle on my ruler and I'm going to put the dashed line on the edge and I'm going to cut away the part of these squares that I do not need. Notice it's face down, that's very important, and that's the correct angle. Now for my um, side triangles, I need two red and two dark blue. So I'm going to just lay that there. So I've got to have two red and two blue, and to cut those, I have to have them face down. If I don't have them face down, they are not going to fit with those base tri uh, base squares that I cut. When you're cutting your replacement triangles, your side triangles, you have to go to the bold solid line and we're going over. I'm assuming we don't have any questions or comments because Tony hasn't told me yet. So I'm going to twist again. Make sure you don't flip it. You're just twisting and you're going to make your second cut. So I'm going to have a little bit left over but that way, when I lay those triangles here, if everything's face down, you can see that those are going to match. If I flip it face up, now you can see that I'm still going to be um, oriented the way I need to, and it's opposite these pale blue ones. So I'm just going to grab the pale blue ones and keep those with the base square that were cut face up. I'm going to take the dark blue and the red. These were all cut face down and I'm going to put them together. Now that being said, notice I have four that were cut face up and four that were cut face down. I could have, um, and I actually did when I was making the sample, I just left them uh, front to back, front to back, the way they came off the bolt, cut them all at the same time, and that automatically gave me the opposite um, orientation that I needed for this block. But just to make sure that you knew um, exactly how those needed to be placed, I cut them all um, either face up or all face down. So before you stitch them together, that was weird because it kind of glitched, but it's still there. Lay them here and make sure that they are right. Tony saw the glitch. I saw it on the camera and then it was it seems fine. If you lay this here like this, you can see I don't have the right side triangles to match the base units that I had prepared. So make sure that you lay them down where they look almost like the square they're going to become anyway. So I'm going to just move these over and I'm going to flip the side triangle over to the top and I'm just going to overlap just a bit. I'm going to have a little bit of an ear sticking off at the top as well as the bottom. And I just kind of center it on there and you, I've not ever had a problem with not having enough to trim but you just uh, make sure that both ends of it, the top and the bottom, have about the same amount um, of ear sticking off over the top. So when I get to the bottom, I'm just going to assembly line sew and grab the next one. And I can quickly tell if I lay it here and it doesn't look pretty much like a square at this point, it is not going to work and you're going to be recutting something because it has to basically look um, like it's going to when you get ready to trim, just a bit oversized. And I'm just aligning the long cut edge and I'm just stitching right down the edge using a quarter inch seam allowance. I have a little bit of wiggle room so I don't have to fuss with it, but I do want to make sure that I do um, a consistent quarter inch seam allowance. You know, sometimes, um, especially when we're first sewing, we tend to have a thick seam allowance and maybe a thinner seam allowance and that makes it hard to get the accuracy you're going to want to want uh, to accomplish. 
So practice making your seam consistent from the beginning to the end of that seam. I'm just going to go right down the edge. And I've got one more and lay it there, make sure it's still basically a square with a split in it and stitch the fourth one. Now that is all I need for the side kick and I'll show you because it just has that one side that's been replaced. Now I haven't pressed it, but I'll show you. So there's my side kick. And all I'm going to do at this point is give it just a quick little finger press. You don't want to be real heavy handed with your pressing because this whole seam is a bias seam. And I would do that with all four pieces as it comes off the, um, out from under the needle. And I'm just going to lay these aside and stitch the, the first triangle on the high-low units. And I'll press them all at the same time. But I'm just giving them a quick little finger press. Let me part my needle and get the fourth one. Because that's all four of my um, sidekick units. I have two red and two blue for this block. Now you have several color options and you can see those on your um, pattern that you're going to download from Studio 180. So now when I lay these here and they look pretty much like a um, uh, square, then I'm going to be fine. Now I will tell you, it would be possible to stitch it that way. It's not going to work. So if it doesn't look basically like a square at this point, you need to fix something. And now this time I'm going to flip over and again I'm going to have a little bit of an ear on the top and the bottom of this seam. I'm going to stitch right down that long seam and I want a consistent seam from top to bottom where I don't have any really thick places or any really thin places. I want it to be consistent all the way down. So I'm going to do that with all four of my base squares and replace it with this pale blue. It doesn't show up as much on the camera as it does in person, but um, it will work fine for what I'm doing because I kind of want it to look a little bit like a shadow anyway, so it's going to be fine for what I'm doing. If you look at the pictures that are on the um, pattern that you'll download from Studio 180 Design, you could use four different colors to make that twisted pinwheel. I only used um, the two colors, the dark blue and the red. So I've got the third one and I've just got one more and I will have my side triangles set up and then we're going to the iron I love the v-block tool because this shape is a challenge if you're trying to do this with templates and I have great success using the v-block tool because I can make them oversized and I can trim them down I don't have to do any paper tear out. Um, the first time I made a v-block unit it was called uh, Peaky and Spike and I paper pieced it because I didn't know how else to get um, the precision that I knew was necessary. Now I can use the v-block tool and it's perfect. Okay so I've got I left my sidekicks over here. I've got four sidekicks and the beginning of four high lows. I'm going to press the sidekicks first. And I finger pressed them. I'm just going to set the iron on it and let the iron do the work. Notice I had two of them upside down, but it really doesn't matter. I'm just pressing that seam. This is when you get the acorn pressing solution, but I, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and press these pale blue triangles on my high lows. There's one, and I'm finger pressing it as I go. That's often when I finger press is at the ironing board. And I often stack my units as I'm pressing because that way the bottom units get a little extra time and heat 
under the iron that just kind of helps them uh, flatten out now I'm gonna grab the acorn pressing pin if I can find it there it is and I would just give this a swipe set the iron on it let me move that four patch give this a swipe and while I'm getting one ready I'm letting the iron sit on the one previous to it and I've got all four of those ready to trim get these pressed and notice you don't probably see any pressing solution trust me it's there it's just very faint some colors it shows up more than other colors but it works very well to flatten out your units so now I'm ready to lay these aside because I have another step to do to them before I trim here's my first ones and they are already uh, ready to trim I'm gonna save them and do the next step on my high lows and then I'll show you all the trimming for all of them so these are ready to trim I'm taking these back to the sewing machine there are um, several different ways to approach this high low unit this technique sheet has you take a square draw one line across the back of the square and stitch it on a folded corner style so I'm just going to align that square onto my base square and it's going to overlap that side triangle which is what I want it to do and I'm going to stitch right on that line no, notice I only have one line drawn on here you don't do the two lines like you would if you were making half squares or combo, uni combo units this one has a line on it I don't know if you can see it in the camera but I drew my lines ahead of time and I'm just going to line that up stitch right across that square and I'm just going to do assembly line style do all four of them because once I get this step done and pressed I'm ready to trim all of my high low units so there's I'm lining up on the corner of my base square whoops hang on my knee lever slipped out of its spot by the way I cleaned and oiled my machine over the weekend it's time if you haven't done yours it's probably a good idea um, mine probably needs cleaning and oiling a couple of times of, of the a couple of times a month because of the amount that I sew you may be able to get by with just once a month but it's a good idea to kind of get yourself in the habit of regular cleaning and oiling of your machine they'll last a lot longer so I've got all four of those squares stitched on now at this point I can either take my scissor and cut across here but what I'm typically doing is grabbing some sort of a uh, measuring tool this time I'm I've got a two and a half inch square that's not really big enough to go all the way across but it is big enough to protect my fingers I don't want to do this with a magic wand because there's not enough plastic there to protect your fingers to keep your fingers away from the blade so I'm going to do that with all four units and once I get that done I'm ready to take all of it to the ironing board press it and then I'm ready to trim this part you could save if you are a mind to I'm going to pitch it because I um, have other things that I want to do so I'm going to go to the iron so now I'm going to at this point finger press those small triangles back and I trimmed away here so I'm ready to press that back and I'm going to do that with all four of my units I have two red ones and two dark blue and once you get that done you're ready to trim your sidekicks and your high lows so let's first of all trim a high low and I'll show you why I think I'll do with the red because I think you'll be able to see better 
you want to use the square end of your tool for cutting. And by the way, if you are left-handed, you're simply going to turn your tool a quarter turn where the angled side is pointing toward you and your unit is going to point to the right. So you're going to just basically pretend this is the V that we worked on last week and the week before. And whatever size you're after, your finished size indicator goes right on the intersection between this long um, triangle and the short triangle. And so it happens to be a four inch finished unit. I'm going to put the number four right on my intersection and this long line lines up on the long um, spiky seam and I can trim up and over. Then I'm going to turn 180 degrees and this time I'm going to line up on the four and a half inch lines. That's my size that I'm trimming to so that it will finish four inches. Once I get that in the right place, there's a bold solid line that's going to land on the intersection at the top. The four and a half inch line is going to be on the bottom edge and the side and the number four, my finished size, is going to be right above the base so I know that I'm trimming to the correct size. And so there is a high-low unit trimmed to four and a half inches and I need all four of them trimmed that way. I put the number four on the intersection, line that up, and you can make all sorts of interesting shapes with this high-low technique. Again, I'm looking at the four and a half inch line for the outside edges. The number four, my finish size, will land right above the base that also protects the seam allowance right here so that I have a perfect quarter inch from the edge to the point. And also, you'll notice there will be a little tiny flat spot on this long spike. That gives me um, the seam allowance I need so that when I stitch this seam, it'll come to a nice sharp point. So you're going to do that with all four of your high-low units. For your side kicks, it's going to be very similar, except that I don't have a point here at the base that I have to line up my finished size with. So all I do is put my line, the long diagonal line, on the seam and make sure that I have plenty of room all the way around the four and a half inch square. So I can trim up, over, turn 180 degrees, and this time the four and a half inch edges um, the edges go right on the four and a half inch line. The half, this half of the bold X is going to be on the seam. The other part of the X is not going to have anything it has to line up with. But if that uh, bold solid X has half of it on here and it lines up on the four and a half inch line, then I know I have what I need for my sidekick unit. So you're going to do that with all four of your sidekick units. So that's how we approach a high-low or a sidekick unit. And then you can put them together however you want. Um, the one that I had done ahead of time had the four patch in the center and then the red small triangle on this high-low unit is right next to the red part of the four patch. The blue on the high-low is going to be right next to the blue. And then when I put the um, sidekick units on, they were placed so that the three blue uh, areas were together and the three red. And I'm going to put them closer so you can see a little more closely what this looks like. So it creates a little funny um, cr um, crooked pinwheel that way. You don't have to place them that way. You don't even have to uh, use the same colors. There are on the um, instructions another one where they put instead of this pale blue shadow looking uh, long triangle, they put another red triangle there so that it was just kind of more of a wonky pinwheel that way. So you have lots of options for how you put it together. Um, I'll go ahead and finish this and put it up on the wall 
later and you'll be able to download the instructions uh, from our Google Drive. It'll have my cutting instructions and then also it'll have a link for uh, where you find the patterns from Studio 180 Design website. You can of course go ahead and download a bunch of the Studio 180 Design uh, blockbusters. Do keep in mind that we're not going to do every block in that series. Um, I'm not going to do any of the specialty star tools. Somebody yeah, says, might be off. hmm, maybe batteries. it may be batteries, but it indicates that it's still working right now. So hopefully you can hear me enough for um, a farewell for the rest of today. And uh, we'll see you next week live at 5. Until then, happy sewing. Come see us. We have lots of fabric and patterns and tools to get you started or to help you finish up whatever projects you're working on. So happy Tuesday. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.